Okay, my friends, as you know, Tyson is doing a heck of a good job out here on the West Coast. And this is a membrane. And this is the upper layer and this is the lower layer of a bilipid membrane. Look it up. Proteins and enzymes pass between this layer up here and this layer down there through this bilipid layer, through these protein channels. This is a foot thick or more, just the layer here, and between the two layers, I don't know, six, six feet or more. Now, let's see what it has to say in some of the ancient texts about this. Okay, my friends, I said I have a new attitude, and the reason is because Jesus said, I disclose my mysteries to those who are worthy of my mysteries. And I was disclosed all these mysteries, and I just absolute dropped on like a bomb. I was in despair after finding the giants and having them DNA tested and being rejected and rebuked by everybody. And, um, and from behind me, I heard, I was sitting here literally almost in tears. This is years afterwards. And um, I heard, look in Morocco from the TV set behind me. I looked in Morocco just out of lark. And there's a giant fish. And guess what? There's a giant dragon attacking the giant fish right there. Spitting stuff out to try to kill it. And the giant dragon is running out and bleeding out in the desert. And there's all his goo is running out of him. You know, the bodily fluids. These are his dragon scales. And this is his throat. And it comes down here to what is also talked about in the Bible. God's great and mighty sword slashed his throat. Right there. I mean, that's and that's where he bled out in the desert. I understand these things extremely well, my friends. That is not just an accident. And that is blood, and that's the black and the red blood, and this is the effluent of a decaying, gigantic creature. Now, like I said, I expected when I saw this, I said, well, I'm going to disclose this. And then there's no way they can hide. I sent this to NASA. I sent this to virtually every university. Not a single word has been spoken. That tells me all I need to know. Okay, that, uh, that statement came from the Nag Hammadi texts. Now, the Nag Hammadi texts were found somewhere around 1948, just after the Holocaust, right in that area, and the Dead Sea Scrolls. The whole thing changed everything about the history of Christianity. And this talks about the exact words spoken by Jesus when he was walking around alive in the flesh, among humans. Secret sayings the living Jesus spoke and Didymus Judas Thomas recorded. That's Doubting Thomas. He said, whoever discovers interpretation of these sayings will not taste death. That's what Jesus said. And Jesus also said, those who seek should not stop seeking until they find. When they find, they will be disturbed. When they are disturbed, they will marvel and will reign over all. And after they have reigned, they will rest. So you have to search and you have to seek and you have to be thirsty and you have to drink. And you have to be able to taste what you drink. You cannot slurp it down and not understand what you drink. This is critical. This is huge. This, there's a ton of statements. Whoever discovers interpretation of these things will not taste death. Now, I've dug into them deeply. And um, they s support the fact that the earth is a creature, is a corpse. Well, let's go on and see. Here it is right here. Number 56, Jesus said, whoever has come to know the world has discovered a carcass. And whoever has discovered a carcass of that person, the world is not worthy. So you better start discovering carcasses. Now, number 80 fulfills the second half of this statement, which says, Jesus said, whoever has come to know the world has discovered the body. Whoever discovered the body of that one, the world is not worthy. It, and take that into consideration with that first statement. It says, I will only disclose my secrets to those who are willing to accept them. And academia and the people that teach you and the people that force you to serve them 
will not accept any reality. That's what I have found. It's very disturbing. There's some terrible, terrible statements about teachers. And it talks about here, if a blind person leads a blind person, both of them will fall into a hole. And that's what's happened. Jesus said the Pharisee and the scholars have taken the keys of knowledge and hidden them. They have not entered, nor have they allowed those who want to enter to do so. And then there's some really, really bad ones. Now, the reason I'm presenting this in this way today is that I, I discovered what I called mud fossils years ago, eight, over eight years ago. And I presented all this to Yale and Harvard and all the top universities. I tried to contact every professor that I could contact. And they, I believe they have no faith in them, in God. Not a single one was interested whatsoever because it appears that it points to the facts that we are discussing right here about Jesus and about God and about our universe and about our earth and about the things that were written and never have been taken into consideration. So not a single thing, not one single word that is taught today in the colleges, in the universities, in the schools in general, has any basis in fact. None whatsoever. They don't understand our history. They don't understand our existence. They don't understand the geology. They don't understand space. They don't understand energy. They don't understand the atomic nucleus because it's all based on the fact that we came from dead dust. Now all of this has been exposed and they have turned their backs. This was written about as well. Okay, I know that's a crazy bold statement, but we have new species, all kinds of new different species, that, things that aren't human as well, that were talked about in the past. I believe now from our experiments that light is nothing more than electrons which are the smallest particles that exist and when you smash them they actually break in half and the positive and the negative because they are dipoles break in half and I can show that it's called electron flood there's the weak ones the black ones there's the explosive one the fermion which is the charged particle these black ones are the charged particle carriers now they're claiming that might be dark energy it doesn't matter Whatever they have been talking about is wrong, virtually across the board. And I tried presenting all this to everybody. Not a single one will, will, will respond. This can be easily be tested and checked. Not a one will respond. We have geese, a goose. These are feathers in its head. I have giant human beings, DNA certified, cat scan, anatomist. We are living among a bunch of liars that are your teachers. They will not address reality. They have been spoken of, and they are in deep trouble. I just want to mention, you're the ones that are paying them, and I am too, especially our tax dollars are going to all of these funded things, that they, they refuse to engage in reality. Why would we pay them for this? I think you have to confront your professors. I'm confronting everybody, but nobody else is confronting anybody. They're just going along with it because you have to in order to make a living. I don't care about making a living. So, you know, you, 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 if, if nobody steps up and talks, it just goes on like this forever. Walk around in circles. As long as they're getting paid, the, the circles will get bigger and bigger and bigger. And they will keep walking around more and more circles and more and more money thrown into the middle of that circle. No problem. We can walk in circles forever. Just keep paying. And we'll give you that paper that says you can go get a job. Now, you know, I said I have a new attitude, and here's why. I mean, it's, I know I have been rejected, denied, belittled, demeaned, and just pushed aside in every which way by mainstream science, but that is to be expected. The righteous hate what is false. I hate what is false because I am righteous. The wicked make themselves a stench and bring shame on themselves. That's academia because they don't care about truth. The time will come 
when men will not tolerate sound doctrine, but with itching ears they will gather around themselves teachers to suit their own desires. And that's what's happened. So they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. <laughs> Mainstream science, men with titles proving false to their teachings. They have turned to myths. We have turned to what are really facts, and they have made them into myths because of their denial of truth. According to the Valentinius, according to Valentinius, this secret tradition provides the key that is essential for a complete understanding of Jesus' message. You have to really get deep into it, apparently. Well, obviously. <laughs> One of his followers put this in the following words. The scriptures are ambiguous. He's taken them in a lot of different ways. The truth cannot be extracted from, the, from them by those who are ignorant of tradition. So if you don't know, if you haven't studied, if you haven't looked, if you haven't dug, if you haven't drunk of the past, you cannot understand. You can only be taught what is somebody's going to read to you. And that is what's happened. Now, Arrhenius against uh, whatever this is, heresies. The Valentinians claim that the secret teachings are meaningful only to those who are scripturally mature. So you understand, you have read these things and you understand them. You know, at least you read them. You have to be scripturally mature. You have to have some understanding of the past. If a person was not ready to receive them, they seem like nonsense. Well, and they did. To me, I mean, obviously they seem like nonsense. Giant dragons and snakes and, I mean, just it's insane. But it is true. Their value can be judged only on a spiritual basis. Well, now we can judge it on a material basis because that's where I come from is a material background. According to the Valentinian tradition, Paul and the other apostles revealed these teachings only to those who were spiritually mature. So, and, and really, it, it, they were smart because to just to talk, it's like throwing the pearls at swine, is what they say. And everything that you read, is just, it's 100% right. Although there's a lot of things that just are confusing as can be about how you're going to hate your parents and, you know, you're, like things like this are, you know, the cost of discipleship. Now, it says, I tell you, not one of these, those men who were invited will taste my banquet. Whatever that means. Large crowds were now traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Now, so we have to hate the worldliness is what it boils down to me. You don't hate him as a person. You hate the fact that we are we are part of this system and you can't stop it you can't do anything about it because the pharisee and the academics own us they literally own us the academics literally own society think about this and it's, it's written here and oh i have a ton of them to talk about the destruction does not sleep the teachers very 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 bad and they will never turn around and look, because they haven't for years. And they will never do it, I don't think. But that's up to them. Now, let's just talk about this for a second. All right? Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, as he approached the Mount of Olives, Teacher, rebuke your disciples, because they're all screaming, Yay, Jesus is coming. And Jesus said, If they remain silent, the very stones will cry out. And they are. All right, this is the academics. These are the teachers. These are the leaders. Matthew thirteen sixteen. In them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled. You will be ever hearing and never understanding. It only goes to the ones that are ready. You will be ever seeing and never perceiving. 
hearts have grown callous, hardly hear what their ears or in their eyes are closed. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. Truly, I tell you, many prophets and righteous men long to see what you see, did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. And many still do not see it and do not hear it, regardless of how forced in their face it is. They just are not ready, and they are not going to be on the right side of eternity, as it appears to me. That's what I see. All right, these are kind of bad statements. Titus 1.16, they claim to know God, but by their actions they deny him. They're detestable, disobedient, unfit for doing anything good. These are the people that are telling you there's no no God, there's, we're all dead dust, we're, you know, all of that sort of stuff. Jude 1.4, certain individuals condemn, whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign Lord. And they have, you know, so don't bring that stuff around here. You want to learn reality, you come here and we'll teach you about, we all came from scum and we're all dead dust and there was you know I mean it just it gives you a license to do as you please because there is no commitment to eternity there is no obligation to God or Jesus or any of that stuff Peter 224 in their greed these false teachers will exploit you with tales they have concocted and they will not turn around and they won't look at evidence they truth is not a, 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 anything that they care about the long-standing verdict against them remains in force. Their destruction does not sleep. And then it goes on a little worse than that because they are absolutely destined for hell. And that's not good. See what's in front of you. There's nothing hidden. All right? And then it talks about the fleeing serpent. In that gray, with his great and mighty sword, he'll kill the dragon that lives in the sea. There's so much that is written, it's, I, I, could, I could go on here for days. The stones of the walls will cry out, and the beams of the woodwork will echo it. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and they will not turn their eyes to reality. Living stone, coming to him as a living stone, rejected indeed by men, chosen by God and precious, you also are living stones. You're being built up as a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. We are the stones that will enter heaven. And the ones that have no ability to see and have lost their eyes and lost their ears, I, 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 I tremble for them. I really I tremble for them. And they should tremble for themselves. Eternity is, is a long time. And professing them to be wise, they became fools. You know, this is a friendly, loving warning. This is not an admonishment of, you know, anything nasty to anybody. I, I tried every which way to get through, and now I'm just going to put it all out there. All right, this is something I've been chosen to present. And I was literally chosen, there's no question about it. I woke up in the morning, one morning, says, there's something in the woods calling my name. I said, my wife, I said, something in the woods calling my name. I went out, eventually found the giants. I had them DNA tested, proven in every way. And when I found them, I came back, I plugged in my computer, looking for giant human beings and came up and said these things are for you to see and for others as a test and that is what's happened and it's become mostly failing grades a hundred percent failing in academia I have found one single PhD that has has been um, willing to accept reality unless you you're that one I would like to hear from you and I, but, you know, maybe there's some that would say it, but they would hide 
from saying, I can't say this in front of anybody else because I will be destroyed. That's the key. They own you. Academia literally owns humanity. Very, very insidious, tricky, devious. And uh, in my mind, disgraceful. To not... Although, you know, it's written that they will never see because they're not ready. Now, having them not be ready and be able to see, does that give them the right to own humanity? I don't think so. So what do I do? Just let them off the hook and say, oh, there's no problem. Let them just be the way they are because that's the way they are. Well, that's the way they are, and now they own you. So now you have to be submissive to them and pay them to validate you that you will agree to their terms. That's all it is now. It's an agreement to their terms. That's what that document is. Your, your degree is an agreement to the terms that they dictated to you, and now you know that those terms are based on, on truth. And they won't turn around. So how do we handle that? There's, there's a war going on, and I'm seriously, literally mean it. They, they are against God in every single way that I can see. But I have to go back to the fact that Jesus said you know, they're not going to get it. They're just not going to get it. Here's my problem. They're in charge of you, and they don't get it. So you, they force you to do things that you, you lose reality. They force you against truth. That's not right. It's just not right.